So for chapter two, um, I cannot spend as much time on this. We're gonna have to move quicker through the process because we're almost out of class time. So first off, let's look at the title. What is the title? Heroes and superheroes. So what do you think we're gonna talk about? The difference between the two. Yes, the difference between the two. So we have yet again a comparison and contrast essay. Now let's look at the subclaims. Defining a hero and superhero. How to be a hero. Fear and the superhero stories. The example of the superhero. Those are the subclaims that we're going to be looking at. So we already know that we're having comparison and contrast. We're having definitions, because we have to define each one of them. And if we have definition, we're automatically going to have to have examples, because we define things through examples. So we already know that these modalities are within this chapter. And they get right to the point. They don't waste any time. They're like, hey, all these people have been trying to figure out uh, the superhero business because the stories embody our deepest hopes and fears as well as our highest aspirations. And they help us deal with our worst nightmares. Bam. Right there. They're in your face. They are not near as gentle as Mark Wade. They chart out questions that we'll have to face in the future, and they shed new light on our present condition. In addition, they do all this in such a way as to give us a new sense of direction and resolve as we live our own lives. All right, so they're right to the point. There's no holds bar. I'm telling you what I'm doing. This is what we're doing. Let's get started. That's how, they're, that's how they are. So let's define a hero as superhero. In order to do this, they ask you some questions, they use transitional words, so what is a superhero? What sets a superhero apart from a normal person? Well, first of all, so first of all is a transition to let you know that they are beginning their argument. They look different, they have cool gadgets, their names are usually hyphenated, and their names usually end in some sort of man or woman or boy or girl. Superheroes have powers and abilities beyond ordinary mortals. They pursue justice, defend the defenseless, help those who cannot help themselves, and overcome evil with the force of good. All these things are the evidence and the examples to define what a superhero is. Let's turn the page. On page 12, they're acknowledging the continuum of opinion regarding superheroes and heroes. And they talk about what the prefix super indicates, and they say it indicates the possession of superpowers. And then they say, hey, look, um, is a superhero really a superhero? Because if you have powers and abilities that can protect you from harm, then are you really heroic? So they're addressing naysayers, is what they're doing. What's so heroic about stopping an armed robbery if your skin is bulletproof? They want you to think about all those things. And they say, on the other hand, this is a transition word. They're letting you know that they're going to address the naysayers. If you're actually heroic in your actions, it must be because you did indeed have a lot to lose if things gone badly, which can't be true unless you lack the typical powers that are distinctive of superheroes. If this argument is right, then at worst, the concept of a superhero in its extreme idealism is an oxymoron, literally incoherent, a contradiction in terms. Go to the next paragraph. He redirects the continuum of opinion. He says, all right, this is what people are saying, but now, listen to this. As tempting as this reasoning might seem, it's just based on a simple misunderstanding of the heroic. 
So they go to the Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> the Oxford Dictionary is the only dictionary that is acceptable to use within our field. And he looks at the Greek meaning of the heroic. Man of superhuman qualities favored by the gods. Second definition, illustrious warrior. And the third definition, man admired for achievements and noble qualities. He then tells you, this third definition is of a particular interest. So he just narrowed his argument. He's only going to focus on the third one. No level of achievements alone is enough to make someone a hero. That person must embody noble qualities as well. So you can't just be able to go have bulletproof skin and have claws come out of your hands and all those sort of things. You have to have noble qualities. And he says this is the concept of a hero. It's the moral category, M-O-R-A-L, moral. So a superhero is extraordinarily powerful with weaknesses as well as strengths, whose noble character guides him or her into worthy actions. This is a definition. So now that you have a definition, you know that you're going to be provided with examples. This is how this essay cycles. Subclaim, evidence, definition, examples, and we just keep going back through that circle throughout the entire essay. So this whole next paragraph is nothing but examples. He gives examples of heroes, officers, doctors, nurses, teachers. And then down below that, he says these people literally do not get the attention that they deserve because they don't have super abilities. We only look at their normal activities. Now he takes you to the comments, and he wants you to think about J. Jonah Jameson, which is the editor-in-chief for the Daily Bugle, which is where Spider-Man works. And he talks to you about Spider-Man and how Spider-Man's private life and his public life have to have some sort of balance, because without it, the ethos of Spider-Man would not occur. Look at the last few sentences of the page. In some prominent comic book stories, ordinary people, first welcome superheroes as needed saviors, then come to take them for granted, and finally begin to resent them for their heroically never-ending efforts to do what the rest of the population ought to be doing, too. The superheroes stand out, not just because of their outfits and powers, but because of their altruistic activism and dedication to what is good. This is something we need to remember for the rest of the course. Starts at the bottom of page 13 and goes to the top of 14. When we get to the movies for this course, I'm going to be pointing this out to you. So now that he's giving you a comic example, he's going to give you an everyday example. He starts talking about engineers, musicians, artists. He talks about people who are fighting cancer. Talks about people who have to overcome extreme odds to get a degree, and he says, heroism as a concept should never be diminished by over application. But at the same time, we do not properly understand it unless we see its application everywhere is appropriate. So what he's saying is this. You have to have balance. We look at supers because we want to escape the everyday life occupations that require heroism, such as military, police, firefighters, nurses, teachers, the list just keeps going on. But we can't just solely focus on the supers, otherwise we are going to forget about ourselves and we'll just be living in a fantasy world. And we can't stay in a fantasy world. We have to live our real life. So he's calling your attention back to balance, which is what chapter one did as well. Chapter one told you that we need balance in our life. But 
as the core concept of the hero has morphed over time from the ancient idea that did involve something like superpowers to the more modern notion